news is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of HCAM News Live. I'm your host, Tom Nappy, and HCAM News Live. You can catch it every Thursday from 6.30 to 7 p.m. right here on HCAM. On today's edition of HCAM News, we'll hear the latest updates from Hopkinton Health Director Sean McAuliffe and School Superintendent Dr. Carol Cavanaugh. And we also talked with Hiller's boys basketball coach, Tom Keen, about the upcoming winter season. But first, recently on our Hopkinton Hangout Hour program, we were joined by members of the Hopkinton Police Department to discuss all the happenings at HPD. Here's a look. This past Monday, some of the Hopkinton Police Department staff was on our Hopkinton Hangout Hour program Chief Bennett talked about one of the concerns in town, which was traffic. We've, we've conducted several surveys over the years, and most recently in 2019, uh, we interviewed 445 people on a survey as we built our strategic plan. And over 400 times the word traffic came up in their responses. So it, it's certainly a big issue for the community. Um, and in response, we're all really proud of what we built together over the years. And uh, Sergeant McNeil is a traffic coordinator. Uh, we built, uh, Lieutenant Porter and I built, uh, and Chief Lee was part of it towards the end. Um, we built a pretty comprehensive traffic response to both complaints and monitoring. And Sergeant McNeil leads that. Okay. So my question is, I think everybody in town would understand if we said, oh, let's talk about the intersection of 135 and 85. <laughs> <laughs> and I do want to talk about that, but also I'm interested, what other areas of town or types of roads in town, where do you see a lot of concerns coming from? Sure, the bulk of our complaints uh, from the community come from the roads uh, where the commuters are traveling through the town. So uh, Front Street, Front Street, Ash Street, you know, the connector roads mm -hmm. uh, that also bring the, the bigger neighborhoods towards the commuter routes. And okay. uh, so we okay, can- I know, I know on Chestnut Street, it seems like every person from Hollison went down that street twice a day. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now we have a nice light, a nice new light and turning yes. lights. And, you know, that's one of the things is engineering can help improve traffic a lot, you know. We right. use engineering, enforcement, and education primarily. Those are really the tools we have to for traffic safety. Sergeant McNeil discussed cracking down on speeding. Um, Hello. Most of the complaints that most of the complaints that we get are uh, speeders, of course. Um, that it's always going to happen. It's very difficult to uh, stop everybody from speeding, um, but we do have. Other concerns, such as stop signs, as you said, but um, Main Street, right by Reserve Street, there's a painted box in the road, and a lot of people don't realize what that means. And um, that's that's for that the school right there. The way the traffic pattern for the school is is to come out Reserve Street and get onto Main Street because you can't take a a left hand turn on Wood Street out of the parking lot. So people are uh, just trying in the morning and afternoon are trying to get out of that street onto main street, either left or right. And people are blocking that intersection. So one of our, uh, we had several complaints from, from drivers that it's a diff difficult intersection just by itself, but we worked with the DPW and we had a sign move, don't block the intersection. Um, so it would be a little bit more readily available for drivers that are driving on main street to see so they won't block the intersection. But that's just one example of what our program's doing. Um, mm -hmm. They set up this, uh, we call it a speed spy. It's this black box that we can attach to a uh, telephone pole and it records vehicles 
uh, traveling both directions, and it records their speed and the time of day they they pass by. So we get we can get um, the highest hour like people are speeding. So then we can deploy our units. Let's say between twelve and one o'clock in the afternoon, there's four hundred cars that pass a certain area, and the highest speed recorded it was at six o'clock at night so we can send somebody between 12 and one and then we can send somebody at five or six o'clock at night and then if we leave that black box out for a week or so we can see patterns and sometimes the highest speed in car that drives by it may just be one car that drives by at the same time so mm-hmm. it makes our job a little bit easier and in, in enforcing instead of sending an officer down there for you know let's say between eight and nine where there is no speeders and there isn't a problem so that helps that way lieutenant porter talked about the school resource officer protocols so about two weeks prior to the start of every school year we sit down and we meet with our school resource officers to go over the previous year's complaints from either parents or the bus coordinator and so forth and try to find out if we had any uh, problem bus areas or problem streets Leading up to the start of school, um, we start going over a roll call, the various aspects and the locations that we've had problems with in the past. And once the, for at least the first week of school, what we do is we put on extra shifts, which are marked cars or unmarked cars. And they're tasked with either setting up in the school zone to uh, educate the public schools back in session, to slow it down, or to follow school buses around town, uh, to make sure people are stopping from the buses stop at uh, to pick up children and so forth. Uh, We also make sure that we get uh, through social media, uh, we get our messages out regarding the school openings. And um, we always try to get feedback from uh, the community as to what they need or what they're looking for when school's opening. You can see the full program airing on HCAM and our YouTube page youtube.com slash hcam tv i never knew about that black box tool that's pretty cool don't speed folks well uh hopkinton health director sean mcauliffe along with school superintendent dr carol cavanaugh and school nurse Catherine bain also recently joined us on our hangout hour program to talk about the health track app that's being used throughout the school system and by many others. Here's a look at some information about the Health Track app. Uh, You're making all these decisions in the morning. And then if if you have this app that simply asks, you know, is anybody in the house um, uh, currently, um, or have they resulted positive for COVID? Uh, Has anybody been recommended to go get tested for COVID? Has anybody traveled to a high-risk community you know, outside of Massachusetts or a high risk area outside of Massachusetts, or are you experiencing any of these symptoms? It, it gives you that pause to sit there and go, well, you know, me, no, but, you know, my wife, uh, you know, had a possible exposure at work and has been recommended to go in for testing. So you're going to, if you, if you answer honestly, you'll sit there and say, oh, well, my wife is, and you'll check no, and then you'll get a notice saying you shouldn't go to work until um, your wife's results have come in. You know, it's it's to get people thinking and to help assist people with um, the decision making process. And it's a constant re- educational kind of reminder of what the symptoms we're looking for, what um, these exposures are. And in the municipal sector, we've had individuals where they've been completely asymptomatic, but um, at home that evening, they've realized that I couldn't smell a candle, I couldn't smell food, um, and they've gone out, got tested that evening, resulted positive, and and we didn't end up having an exposure in the workplace. And um, we're looking to take that same success and, you know, apply it here, mm-hmm. full setting. So in the school system, the teachers, all of the faculty and staff did get an email so that they could enroll in the um, health track app. And so too did all of the families so that they could enroll their children. 
you know, hopefully in the morning, you know, a mom who has a couple of kids will go through and answer those questions just quickly. And, you know, as Sean just said, hopefully that will kind of jar that person's thinking to make them say, hmm, he is kind of sniffly today now that I'm thinking about it. And, you know, it brings to those kinds of questions into your mind of why is that? You know what I mean? Sometimes, as Sean was just saying, you're in such a hurry in the morning to get yourself up to work, to get the kids out of school, to get the lunches packed or whatever it is that you're doing. You don't really stop and take that time to think about what you're doing. So hopefully the app, the app will get us to that place where people are thinking, hmm, like, let me take a real quick look at my child and, and see what's going on with that kiddo this morning. Um, but as Kathy will share with you, um, in the school, even if someone fills out the app, we still want parents to give our nurses a call because, you know, sometimes it, it's good for parents to have that conversation with the school nurse. It's good for the school nurse to know the, ch the mom's making a decision not to send that kid to school. And certainly Kathy can talk much more articulately to that point. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Um, just to take sort of a step backwards, is just to kind of clarify a little bit in terms of the school district um, we have asked people in the honor system to do that self check-in every morning whether that's staff or parents of students so it's definitely something we've been doing an app is definitely an option you know we've been doing kind of on the honor system and we have a google doc that we ask parents to fill out and it asks those same questions that that health track will be asking so a health track will be another tool um, to gather data um, with we definitely you know, when you think about it, there are a lot of reasons for absence. Yes, COVID is a very important one, but in terms of data collection, there are a lot of other reasons that kids are absent from illness, other illnesses to injuries, to surgery or bereavement or any other reason. So it's important for us to know those things um, and to track all the data for any kind of COVID or COVID-like absence within the district as well to keep our numbers kind of so that we're all on the same page, if that makes sense. And we like to have conversations with the families to kind of gather that data. Where was an exposure? Wasn't an exposure? Well, did you travel? So we have clarity as well. Interesting stuff. Sounds like a cool app. Well, we are going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll hear more from school superintendent, Dr. Carol Cavanaugh about all the happenings throughout the school system. And also Hopkinton Hillers boys head basketball coach, Tom Keen recently talked with us about the upcoming winter season, plus a whole lot more. So you're going to want to stay tuned. You are watching HCAM News. We'll be back in a flash. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Welcome back to HCAM News Live. Well, uh, Hopkinton School Superintendent, Dr. Carol Cavanaugh, this past Wednesday was on our Hopkinton Hangout Hour program to update us on all the happenings throughout the school system, including the COVID-19 situation and the return of the MCAS test. Here's a look. Hopkinton School Superintendent, Dr. Carol Cavanaugh, joined us on the Hangout Hour for a school's update. Part of the conversation involved the return of MCAS testing this year. The MCAS test um, will be held this year, but it's going to be a sort of shortened version of itself. And, you know, I think that school districts have been arguing with the Commissioner of Education that to administer MCAS testing takes an awfully long time, and, and it truly does, and I think he understands that. But at the same time, the commissioner will say, 
but we have no real benchmarking to know where kids are across Massachusetts in terms of their math and ELA growth. And that's really important information for us, especially as we go into next year's planning and you know, hopefully with the pandemic behind us. So I think that what Commissioner Jeffrey Riley has tried to do is arrive at some form of compromise. The test has been shortened. You know, he says he's not going to use the results to do any district ranking. So, you know, you won't be noted as a district in need of improvement. But what the real goal of the testing this year will be is to look at where children are and what we need to do in terms of intervention to catch them up to grade level, you know, if that's what we need to do in particular districts, given the fact that, you know, some time on learning has been lost this year. Dr. Kavanaugh updated on the COVID-19 situation in Hopkinton schools. This is a busy week. And um, the, you know, Sean and I are in communication every single day. The school nurses are out straight. And you know, I do worry a little bit about them because they are in a place where their first role is to be clinical. So they've got kids who are coming down who know, need an infusion or kids who are coming down who have lost a tooth or kids who are coming down who, you know, are socially or emotionally dysregulated. And this is what our nurses do all day. But now we're dealing with COVID too. So they've got kind of a double job. Um, I have the data in front of me here. And at this point in time, we have had 10 students in the Hopkinton Public Schools um, test positive since January 1st. And, you know, it's January 6th today. I think what we're seeing mostly though, uh, travel is causing a lot of kids to need to quarantine, right? But I think the, the places where kids seem to be, you know, transmitting or catching the virus um, are, you know, in house parties. So, you know, a group of girls have a sleepover and then all of a sudden turns out one is, is COVID positive and now we've got five other girls who are, who are quarantined um, or, you know, athletics, hockey has been a place where, you know, we're starting to see people test positive and, and that's been a, a little bit concerning to us. And, you know, I'm hearing from people all over the state that hockey has been, you know, a little bit dicey. So, yeah, I think, you know, house parties and athletics and those sort of things are the, are the things that have been the worst for us. I am very worried about what's going to happen when, you know, we are now reaching phase two. So that will mean that Sean and Casey are going to need to start vaccinating people. So that will put an additional strain on us. What will happen if, I mean, you know, the nurses aren't doing the contact tracing, but Sean and Casey are, and then they report back and then the nurses do a lot of the maintenance with the families and, and determine when kids can come back to school and kind of walk, well, they don't determine it, but they kind of walk families through the, the return. And I'm just worried about what the strain of that is going to look like if we're doing contact tracing, maintenance, vaccinating, you know, I'm, I'm still, I, you know, it, it's nice that we have been one of those few school districts that has not had to close for an extended period of time. And I'm hoping that we're able to maintain that as we come into these, these next few months. Right now, things are a little bit grim with the number of, of people who are testing positive, but so far so, so good in keeping our doors open. You can see the entire conversation airing on HCAM and on our YouTube page at youtube.com slash HCAMTV. You can find our full conversation with school superintendent, Dr. Carol Cavanaugh at our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMTV and also our website, HCAM.TV. Well, winter sports have started up here to start off the new year and the Hopkinton Hillers boys basketball team We'll be taking the hardwood very soon. And of course, we'll have coverage for you of all the home games on HCAM. We'll have more on that in just a bit. But first, we caught up with Hopkinton Hillers boys basketball head coach, Tom Keen, about the upcoming season on a recent edition of our new sports talk show, HCAM Sports Talk Live, which of course you can catch every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Here's a look at our conversation with Hiller's head coach, Tom Keene. Such a long layoff. Uh, the boys were really excited to be out there. And, uh, you know, they worked very, very hard uh, in both of those scrimmages. Um, for the most part, we're healthy. We, you know, we have uh, 12 players this year. Um, the Tri-Valley League has limited uh, the rosters to 12 per team because of COVID. 
Um, and right now we just have uh, one um, player, a sophomore, uh, Karosh Fatahe, who uh, ha has a deviated septum. So he had a surgery yesterday. So I wish him well and a speedy recovery. So he'll be back in a couple of weeks. So I look forward to uh, seeing him healthy again. So uh, how have the practices been? Um, have you had to divide up the team more than usual? And I always uh, figured that it must be pretty tough playing basketball in a mask. How is that going for everybody? <laughs> yeah, so it's definitely uh, a very big adjustment for the kids. Um, and when they're off the court and they're not doing drills, they have to maintain social distancing. So just reminding um, high school kids that they have to stay six feet apart um, has been uh, something that we have to be super aware of this year. Um, and as far as wearing the masks go, I mean, it's definitely a challenge for them. Um, you know, I've spoken to a lot of coaches in the area, some of the college coaches to talk about what has worked for them, you know, and I was talking to, uh, the Holy Cross basketball coach, Brett Nelson, and he was telling me that his kids have had a lot of success, uh, wearing a type of, um, plastic piece, um, around their mouth. So it separates their mouth from the mask. So we're kind of investigating right now, figuring out what works best for our kids and uh, trying to figure it out. But it's definitely a challenge, but it's something that I keep telling the uh, team that everybody in every part of the uh, state is dealing with. So we're gonna control what we can control and uh, mask wearing, I, I, I definitely can uh, sympathize with them. It's, it's, it's a challenge. Certainly is. Uh, uh, no, coach, you couldn't... have to wear. Coach, you have to wear master of the games. Yes. Yeah. How is that going kind to of your affect your communication to your referees? <laughs> <laughs> How is that going to work out? Because we know we get you on some great close-ups over the several several seasons where right. you might not agree with a call or you know yeah. you just want to get clarification. Uh, right. I don't know. What do you think? Think easier, less technical is what? <laughs> yeah, I think it, I think it'll I think it's definitely gonna help me, Mike, because uh needless to say, uh a lot of people say that they can read my face very easily. You know, it might be more challenging for my players a little bit, but uh no, I think it's gonna help me out a little bit in, in that regard. You know, if uh if you have a a comment for the official that might be of a constructive nature, then uh, they under the mask, which will help out a little bit, I think. Is there any rule changes? I haven't heard of any, but uh, was there any uh, slight rule changes or anything like that? Yeah, so um, there's a few rule changes. Uh, the, the first one being there's no, no jump ball this year to start the game. So um, <laughs> I'm glad you told me that. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah I didn't know that. It, yeah. it starts going to be an inbound pass at half court. Yeah, it's going to be an inbound pass. Uh, the first scrimmage we went to, uh, Brian Keith lost it rock, paper, scissors against the kick and <laughs> airborne. So we're not going to let him do rock, paper, scissors again. And then uh, at Bellingham, they flipped a coin. So, nice. uh, so there's no, wow. no jump ball. It's nice that they mix that up anyway. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and then there is no baseline out of bounds plays this year. So... Um, everything's going to be taken out on the sideline and uh -huh. the person who's guarding the inbounder has to stay six feet away from <laughs> the pass. Well, I, 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 not next you're going to tell me they killed your full cut press. <laughs> yeah, right. That's, that's the, that's the uh, interesting thing, right? Like you can still yeah. press, you can still play everybody man to man once the game's it's into action. So, right. Right. Um, it's definitely unusual. I'm sure they have reasons behind it. Well, we are certainly looking forward to covering some Hiller's basketball this winter. And we'll also have uh, Hiller's hockey as well. And a new addition this year, we'll have Hiller's alpine skiing for you. And all games can be seen on our HCAM Ed channel as well as our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAM TV. We were supposed to have girls hockey this past Wednesday, January 6th, but that game has been postponed to February 13th due to a scheduling conflict. Um, and also uh, Thursday, January 7th, Alpine skiing has been 
postponed as well, but they will reschedule. So our first broadcast of the winter season will take place on Friday, January 8th. We'll have girls basketball. We'll start off at 5 p.m. with the JV game versus Norwood. And then at 6.30 p.m., the varsity team tips off versus Norwood. And we'll also have a link to the freshman game, which is at 3.30 as well. We'll have a stream from the freshman game, and we're hoping we'll have that for Friday. On Saturday, January 9th, Varsity Boys Hockey takes the ice at the New England Sports Center in Marlboro, a 3.40 p.m. face-off with Norwood. Then on Sunday, January 10th, we have a double dose of boys basketball with the JV game starting at 12.30 p.m. against Norwood, and then the varsity game against Norwood at 2 p.m. A whole slate of Hopkinton Hillers winter sports is coming your way. Keeping things going with some happenings in Hopkinton, veterans in service were recently honored, and there's a number of service veterans in Hopkinton, including firefighter Rebecca Lapierre, mechanic Ray Shiata, and police officer Nathan Wright. You can check out more about the effort to honor veterans in service at our website, hcam.tv. But certainly uh, three great community members right here for sure. The Hopkinton Women's Club, they are celebrating 100 years. They recently put a number of different articles of merchandise in a time capsule, which is going to be opened in 50 years. And they invite all community members to their next meeting, which will take place at January 11th at 10 a.m. via Zoom. New members and guests are always welcomed. And Christmas tree recycling is taking place courtesy of Hopkinton Troop 4. It's $15 a tree for curbside pickup. You can schedule your pickup at troop4hopkinton.com slash tree collection. They have one more date left. They'll be collecting trees, and that is January 9th, this Saturday. So if you need your tree picked up, contact the Hopkinton Troop 4. Also, registration is open for Hopkinton Little League. Head over to hopkintonlittleleague.org. Click register now. The deadline is January 31st. And this is a terrific picture, perhaps the last full moon in Hopkinton for the 2020 year. This picture was taken by Amy Markovich, a beautiful photo of the lake over in Hopkinton. And also, government meetings, a whole lot of them this week. This coming week, I should say, on Monday, January 11th at 7 p.m., we'll have the select board meeting on HCAM TV. And at the same time, over on HCAM Ed at 7 p.m., you could catch the school committee meeting. And for the full list of Hopkinton town government meetings, head over to HopkintonMA.gov. Well, believe it or not, we are just about out of time for this edition of HCAM News Live. We thank you for joining us. For everyone at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We'll catch you again next Thursday. Take care, be well, and we'll talk to you again soon. Enjoy the rest of your night, everybody.